beautiful. I've got, looks like sunny weather mixed in with rainy weather, mixed in with windy weather, mixed in with, well, weather. <laughs> and you know, whether or not you can weather the storm really is kind of whether or not you have started your day, prepared your day, or prepared your way with the Lord, because God loves you. Now, God may love you, but that doesn't mean that he's going to just automatically say, okay, everything's hunky-dory, and everything you're doing is fine, so I'm just going to take you along for a ride, and you can do whatever you want to, and you're going to wind up in heaven. No, you'll wind up in hell, because you have a responsibility on your part. God has done his part. He has provided a way of escape that you might be able to bear that judgment that's coming upon the entire world. And that way of escape is through Jesus. God said, bluntly, in the day that the soul that sins, it shall surely die. And sure enough, when Adam sinned, it died, the soul. He began a physical death that was going to extend itself because of corruption throughout generation after generation after generation, all the way down to you. Yeah, you. Now, you may have said that's unfair, and maybe you're right, but to make it fair, by one man sin entered into the world, God sent his only begotten son so that by one man righteousness entered into the world, so that there could be a cure for that with which one man did, because God already knew that you, even if you were born perfect, would screw it up. <laughs> so, no offense to you, but man, we're just kind of like, you know, lucky to be alive, much less, you know, extended some knowledge so that we could learn mercy and grace. So, I kind of like this mercy and grace thing, you know, it's like, oh, you see, grace means that God has to extend it to me. Not that I just automatically get it and say, oh, well, I'm going to take grace, you know, I'll take this and I'll take that and I'll take this out of the Bible and I'll just keep the good parts and throw out the requirements. No. You see, it's a person who is giving you grace, not a store where you buy grace. You can't just get it when you want it. You can't just pick and choose how you get it. You kind of got to develop a relationship with Jesus, you know, and if Jesus decides that you're not in relationship with him, according to 1 John, he says, ooh, you know, you may call yourself a Christian, but if you don't have the Son, you don't have life. Uh, such a deal. You don't get the Son of God? No, sorry. No life. No eternal life. So, when you look at 1 John, you go, well, what do you mean if you don't have the Son? Well, Jesus said that in the Sermon on the Mount, if you look at the back end of the Sermon on the Mount instead of the front end, you know, the front end is where everybody kind of stands and looks at the car, you know, and goes, ooh, that car's impressive. But then once you open up the hood and see what's inside, if it's got a Volkswagen engine, it's not very impressive. But if it's got a V8, whoa, man, it's got some power. Well, guess what? At the back end of the Sermon on the Mount, you begin to see the power of God's Word. Because Jesus says to, literally, those people who kept his sayings, I know you because when I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. When I was naked and poor, you came and you took care of me. And when I was in prison, you visited me. Enter into your rest, my people. But he says to those that also came to him, Ah, you prophesied. That's nice. Ah, you did miracles. That's nice. Ah, you did all these wondrous works in my name. That's nice. Who are you? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. That's not so nice. You see, when you open a hood, you don't want to be surprised by someone having replaced the engine. Because the engine is what drives the car. And, pardon me, but the judgment of God is what drives grace. It forces us to go to God for mercy. <gasps> God? You're going to wipe it out? I think I deserve judgment. Please forgive me. Please help me. Please, you know, like, kind of, Lord, 
have mercy on me and extend your grace to me. Because you see, if you're grabbing a hold of grace by faith, ha, oh, I got grace because I say so. Right. Then you really don't have a relationship with Jesus. Because Jesus is the one who has to say, Father, this one gets grace. That one don't. So you kind of got to have a personal relationship with Jesus because if he doesn't tell you you got it, then you're going to get it, but not what you think. Because, you see, there's a lot of people running around that are saying, Hey, I demand my grace. I demand it in the name of Jesus. I demand it because I have authority. And God looks at him and says, Really? Could you kind of explain that to me? I, I, I really want to know. Go ahead. Take your time. We've got eternity. I'm willing to listen. And so he'll let you, you know, kind of offer your own righteousness and your own reasons why Jesus doesn't know you or does. You see, if he knows you, you won't worry about it. You'll shortcut straight to heaven. But if he doesn't know you, he says, I don't know you. And then you get to appear before the Father. And God says, uh, I made you and I created you and I get to decide what to do with you. Because if you don't measure up, you're checked out. So, guess what? I never wanted to send you to hell. But since you didn't do what I told you to do, you're going there. Because I told you I sent my only begotten Son. Because I love the world. But if you don't accept my love, I don't want to have anything to do with you. I will reject you. I will put you where I would only have put the angels who rebelled against me. I would have only have created hell and the lake of fire for that corruption that is totally wrong in my universe. And yet, you've chosen to go there of your own free will. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Wow, that's pretty serious. I think that makes me kind of work out my salvation with fear and trembling. Not that I'm afraid of being condemned, because there is therefore no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. But I think I want to work out my salvation with fear and trembling, making my calling and election sure that I am in Jesus. I am with Jesus. That Jesus is living in me. That I do have the Son. So I have eternal life. Because if you don't have the Son, you're going to hell. I don't care who you are. Now it is interesting is that recently there's been this whole kind of gamut of things, you know, like there, who's a true Christian? Who's a real Christian? Oh, you can't be a real Christian if you believe in this. You can't be a true Christian if you do that. You can't be this, that, or the other thing because man is making the judgment call. I don't know about you. I kind of like the idea of God making the call one way or the other. Because he can extend mercy and grace. He can say, I'm guilty, but he can also say, but because I love you, I'll forgive you. I kind of like the idea that Jesus gets to decide because if man's deciding, I've already seen what men can do. You see, there's a lot of denominations. There's a lot of sex. There's a lot of faith. There's a lot of beliefs. There's a lot of good people. And personally, I'm glad they're good. And I'm glad there's a lot of denominations. I'm glad there's a lot of sex. I'm glad that the Christian religion has everything that you could possibly want. A smorgasbord of faith. Hope. Love. Trust. Religion. Relationship. All kinds of things you could do. But when they start telling each other what they can't do, I want to know what God says to do. You see, I don't want to know what I can't do. I don't want to know what I could do. I want to know what God wants me to do. Because 
if I gotta kinda go with this mercy and grace thing, I kinda wanna stick with the straight and narrow where he wants me to go. Cause, you know, I've already been kinda like with all these groups, you know, that have gone their different directions and kinda skewered it and cured it and kinda made it into like, happy, happy, we're all happy, we're all going to heaven, right? We're all drinking the same Kool-Aid. I don't know about you, but when I get one of those kind of like, you know, happy, happy messages, I kind of start going, whatever happened to hellfire and brimstone? I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't want to condemn anybody to hell, but frankly, I think there's more to it than just like, ooh, God loves you, you're going to go. If he tells me that, I don't mind, you know, it's kind of like... Lord, if you're telling me this, fine. But if he's telling me that, could you please kind of like clarify it for me? Because I don't know about you, but I like to get my back straight. I like to get it straight from the horse's mouth. I like kind of like when they say Missouri, show me, you know? Or wherever it was that they used to call me the show me state. Because, you see, God demonstrated his love towards us. Isn't that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So. God has demonstrated that he loves us. I just want to make sure that I understand what somebody's telling me about his love so that maybe I need to check it out myself, you know, kind of like somebody can tell me that this is uh, to be used for hammering and quite frankly, I might try to use it as a hammer. But it's not really what it was designed for. It doesn't work too well as a hammer. It works pretty good as a drill. So, I know people tell me all kinds of things, but I think I need to figure it out and check it out and follow the instructions, you know, because this came with the instructions and it told me how to put the battery in. Oh! How to reverse the drill. How to set the tension. So, I kind of learned about how to use it before I used it or abused it and broke it. And I sure don't want to break my salvation. <laughs> I don't want to break my covenant with God. You know, that covenant that we're extending ourselves in. You know, one that is of mercy and grace that Jesus has made a covenant with us that we've given our lives over to Him. Oh, was that what I did? I thought it was just salvation. I just have to take it freely. You know, that it was a gift of God, you know, and that I could just get it without having to do nothing. You see, it's true that it's a gift from God, but there's something about God saying, yeah, you could take it, but if you don't got it, it may have gone past you because you didn't take what I really said to do with it, which was to have a way of escape, to have a means with which you could have relationship. For didn't Jesus say, this is eternal life, that they should know me and know him who sent me? So the reality of it is if you want eternal life, you have to know the Son and get to know the Father. Eternal life will be getting to know the Son and getting to know the Father. You will have a personal relationship. The point is, if you're not doing that, then Jesus, in all honesty and in all righteousness, will say to you, depart from me. I never knew you. For if you were of us, you would have stayed with us. But since you left us, you were never of us. So you see how that works? It's kind of like you don't know until you get there, until God tells you you've arrived. So you need to kind of like prepare yourself because we have something to look forward to. We have a hope and an assurance. We have a reassurance from God if... <laughs> Oops! Somebody leave that out of the Christian manifesto? I thought that it was just, we get it, we got it, and it's good. Well, you know, you don't call anybody good except God your Father. And there's a reason why. Because God wants to have a personal relationship with you. And He wants to make you into the image of His Son. 
the glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, and in this place will I give peace. The house that is to be builded for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent, of fame and of glory throughout all countries. The glory of the Lord filled the Lord's house. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. He spoke of the temple of his body. That which was made glorious had no glory in this respect, by reason of the glory that excelleth. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. God hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. The Prince of Peace, he is our peace. The peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You know, I have peace with God when I have peace between God and I. But when I am at enmity with God, I don't have peace with God. I have butting heads, so to speak, against what God is trying to do in me. I'm resisting the grace of God. I'm resisting the work of the Holy Spirit. I'm actually frustrating the grace of God. Did you know you could frustrate grace? Yeah. You could, at some point in time, go so belligerent that God says, uh-uh, I'm done. I'm not going to resist that flesh anymore. You aren't going to yield? Fine. Have it your way. And no offense to you, I don't want it my way. I hope you don't want it your way. Because God offers us peace. He offers us the Prince of Peace. He offers us Jesus if we will accept Him to do it His way today. I know there's a lot of people out there that are going to tell you, first of all, there's no hell, or that, oh, you know, you don't have to do anything, you just accept it. Well, yes and no, because Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. He said, if he's casting away those people because they didn't take care of the poor and needy, because they didn't clothe the naked, because they didn't do all those things that he said to do in the Sermon on the Mount, I think he's got a reason why he's casting those people away. And maybe today, if you read it, he'd figure it out. Maybe. But you know, there's another way. It's kind of like a more excellent way. It's kind of like what Jesus said to do today. Jesus said, you know, I'm looking out there and I can see my father, you know, and I see how he works. You know, my father kind of like works with these disciples of John the Baptist and we accept them. Let them do their thing because no man can receive anything except it was given to him of his father. So don't judge them. Don't judge. Judge not. Not, not. If you judge, you'll be judged. So just don't judge. Get it? Good. And then there's, oh yeah, by the way, there's these disciples over here. No, nope, no, nope, sorry. Don't judge them. Father, he gives what he wills. He chooses what he wills. The God causes the sun to shine and the rain to fall on the wicked and the good. Don't judge them. Tell them. Share with them, care about them, but don't judge them. After all, you don't know what he's doing with them. So how are you going to be able to judge them? You're just going to have to decide to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God and he shall direct your path. You mean I don't get to do it my way? No. You see, it's getting so late in the day that the night is far spent and the day is at hand, the day of judgment that's coming. And so we need to be more sober-minded than we ever were before. We need to realize that if it's your way, it's the highway. And the highway is to hell. And there is a song called Highway to Hell. And you're on it already. You are literally on a highway to hell. And if you're heading that way with the rest of the crowd, you'll get there. No problem. You just have to follow along with the crowd. You just have to go the right direction that they're all going. But if you choose the other way, you need an off-ramp. And Jesus is that off-ramp. He'll take you off that highway to hell and take you by his way, which might be a walk, might be standing still sometimes, might be learning to hear his voice 
and learning to walk not in the ways of men, but in the ways of God. And isn't that what you wanted as a Christian anyways? Is to have it His way and not your way? I hope so. I really do.